Before that, though, you're probably familiar with the expression the sun never sets on the British Empire. We certainly used to say that. The influence of Britain had spread so far across the globe that it was always daytime on some country or province that was controlled by us. Would it surprise you, though, to hear that that is still the case even now? And that's partly because of Britain's 16 overseas territories. These are places like the Falkland Islands or Bermuda or the British Antarctic Territories. Uh, and now a man from Poole has completed a four-year-long quest, expedition, to visit all of those overseas territories and to explore their culture and document their wildlife. He's Stuart McPherson. He's from Hanworthy. Hanworthy. He's made a four-part documentary which will be screened on BBC Four later this year. And he's writing a book about his journey, a copy of which will be sent to every secondary school in the UK. Earlier this week, I went to meet him at his family home. OK, so um, there's six in the Caribbean, two in the Mediterranean, um, these down in the South Atlantic. There's technically five in the South Atlantic. My name's Stuart McPherson. I'm a naturalist, or trying to be at least. <laughs> Over the last four years, I've been very lucky to visit all of the UK overseas territories. These are the islands that remain under UK sovereignty, but are scattered across all seven seas. They are unbelievably special places. They represent, if you put them all together, they represent an area that's seven times the size of the British Isles. They have 20 times the biodiversity, including thousands of unique species that occur nowhere else in the world. But yet, very few people here in the UK even know that they exist, or at least know that all of them exist. I did geography at university and asked 20 of my friends if they could name any of these territories. And the best answer I could get, the best one, was just two, which was the Falklands and Gibraltar. You're looking here at a photo of Salisbury Plain on South Georgia. This has something like half a million penguins at the height of the breeding season. Every single one has a completely different story and history. Many of them had no uh, native inhabitants at all when they were settled by Europeans. Others did. Others were abandoned. For example, Pitcairn had a, a Polynesian settlement, but it was abandoned and then settled by, by Europeans. Um, the populations today all have incredible stories to tell. Tristan in particular being yeah, the most remote inhabited island in the world. So these are the figures. Tristan de Cunha is a village of about 270 people. The, the settlement is called Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. If it were where London were, the nearest settlement in any direction would be past Moscow away. Wow, look at this guy. This... Oh. <laughs> this is pretty much a full-size coconut crab. They can get up to a 90 centimetre leg span to leg span. But this one, I'd say, is, is getting on for that size. It was very difficult, but in many ways I found it very transcendent. Many of them offer a last glimpse of a pristine world. Some of them really are some of the least known and least explored places in the world. For example, in the British Indian Ocean Territory, the official Admiralty charts still have unsurveyed on them. And there's two islands in that system that haven't even been named. OK, so you've done it now. Four years, if not more, of hard work. Um, a couple of things to talk about. One is the book, which you're writing at the moment, and a copy of this is going to go out to every school in the UK. That's right. Lord Michael Ashcroft very kindly backed this project and um, donated the funds to donate one copy of the book to every single secondary school in the UK. Um, the idea being to try and educate an entire new generation about the treasure, the wildlife and the people and the history of these remote islands. There's nothing more important today than, than showcasing the natural world to a new audience, especially now considering how detached many segments of the, of the, the population of youth are today, how detached they are from, from the natural world. So if this project in any way touches any, any people, but especially anyone young, I'll be incredibly happy. Stuart McPherson there, who has been to all of Britain's 16 overseas territories. The website, britishtreasureislands.com, goes live on March the 22nd, so a couple of weeks' time. And that's going to feature 40 short documentaries. The full four documentaries appear on BBC Four later on this year. And he's also giving a talk at the Royal Geographical Society on the 24th of March.